James? This meeting is being recorded for legal purposes. Your lawyers will be furnished with a DVD of proceedings at the conclusion of the meeting. I will not be intimidated into silence. The public have a right to know. So do we, Miss Mild. And right now, I could charge you with withhold information, obstruct justice and reckless endangerment. <laughs> what reckless endangerment? We have here a copy of a press release that we're going to issue immediately unless you tell us everything you know about your husband's so-called story now. I told everything I know last night on national television. Having told us, you had no idea about what your husband's story was about. Precisely. We were putting together the story at the time. <laughs> Rubbish. We know how journalism works, Miss Mild. We deal with you people all the time. I'm sure, for instance, that your rivals would pounce on that press release. They love it when the opposition's credibility and integrity is called into question. Quite properly in this case. You were about to ask what reckless endangerment. Simple. You put someone's life in danger with last night's broadcast. Now that is rubbish. Is it? A row of houses in Kew were bought by a shelf company. However, due diligence was not performed and when it was revealed that those houses were heritage listed, plans to build apartment towers had to be put on hold. Fair summary of my report? Some of it. According to the notes on your husband's computer, he'd discovered that the shelf company was a front. Hmm, linked by nefarious means to a certain merchant bank. And the person who screwed up the development deal was then a junior at that bank. And still works there today. Look, I said all this last night. Your husband doesn't name the bank. As you know, having taken his computer... We seized evidence. We can all work out the name of the bank anyway, can't we? Noratex. Didn't dare say that on air, did you? Now, that would have been stupid. Almost as stupid as the unnamed employee who tried to cover his lack of diligence by paying an arsonist to destroy the houses so the development plans could go ahead. Which it did. So, the only remaining link between our bungling banker and his bosses at Noritex is the arsonist. Logically. Last night you said, and I quote, We believe we, believe we, know. we know who the arsonist is and we'll soon be putting together the final pieces of the jigsaw of money and murder. A jigsaw which led to the death of my husband, Charles Zawalski. Not a teleprompter in sight. The arsonist's identity isn't on your husband's computer, but you claimed on air to know who it is. Yes, I did. Tell us who it is then, or I will have you arrested for withholding information. He can't, because I'm not withholding any information. Do you honestly believe I know who the arsonist is? It was a ploy to smoke him out. <laughs> no pun intended. And that is reckless endangerment. You've set this person up as a sacrificial lamb, hoping your husband's murderer will go after him. You're lucky I don't charge you regardless. This meeting is terminated. And now that we're off the record, pull your head in, Petra. Let us do our job. God's sake, Sean, don't fuss. Uh, Ms. Mild, I was wondering if I could have a word in, um, in private. I wanted to ask a favour. I wonder if you'd be able to use your influence to address the problems that Caroline Joyner is having at the moment. Caroline Joyner, never heard of her. She's the sister of uh, one of my team. Oh, yes. The thief. Since her face was plastered all over the television, she's been fired from her job. I was hoping you might be able to use your position to help her out. Frosty day in hell, Wolf. It doesn't have to be broadcast. I, <clears throat> I was thinking more a discreet phone call to her employer. It was mild. Your husband was always very critical of the police, and in many ways his criticisms were valid. This place is rife with politics, rorts, and press leaks. That's the thing I hate the most press leaks.
coast all clear? Hmm. Well, we can only hope she's done us a favour with her sacrificial lamb. If Jim and Braddock go after the arsonist, we'll be there. We've already got them under surveillance. I'd expect nothing less. Yeah. Yeah, okay, mate. I'll talk to you later. Duncan's guy's having lunch. What about your guy? Coffee. How'd the man go? Waverly nailed her. Beautiful to watch. Oh, he's on the move. So are we. Thanks. Can you call Senior Sergeant Wolf and give him all this information too? The business belongs to Victor Bingley. He's got priors for a range of different stuff, uh, dating back to the 60s. Spent some time inside. It's been clean since 93. When the house is burnt down? Yeah. OK. Here we go. Here we go. Your way out of this, Braddock. Vic Bingley's done an immunity deal in exchange for which he's told us it was you who paid him to burn down the houses in 93. Nice fee. Enabled him to go straight by his little business. If you guys are recording, it's all inadmissible. There's my lawyer will no doubt point out when she gets here. She's the best. Yes, the is envelope there. And I'm four million dollars richer. We don't have to say anything. We're just chatting while we wait for your very highly paid mouthpiece. Cyril, it was a very good idea keeping track of Bingley all those years. Insurance? Mm. Yeah, you must have felt pretty secure until Zawalski found out about your dirty little secret. What happened? He couldn't help himself. I told you what he was going to do, then fronted you with it in that bathroom. He wanted you to beg him not to run the story. He would have enjoyed that. Oh, you people are so stupid. You really don't have the first idea, do you? It wasn't about Zawalski running the story at all. Now, I would have panicked too. Kill him, oh, then use my best mates to set up an alibi. Yeah, that was good. Get them to drag the body through the foyer while he sneaks off to get the car. Gave him a fullback position if things went wrong. Which they did. Because uh, when his mate, Jeremy, found out that the girl on the freeway had been killed too, he got scared, didn't he? Looked like he might buckle. So you had to knock him off too? All to protect your payday. What do you get in your envelope, detective? Satisfaction at watching slime like you go down the gurgler. Me. What about Zabowski? Blackmailer. Oh, greedy, fat. Anyway, I won't be going down the gurgler. I've got more than a good lawyer to work with. What's he got up his sleeves, eh? Excuse me, you can't come in. Sorry to interrupt. Look, if this is about that girl, uh, I've no, already... No, 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 I know you're going to air shortly and uh, I have some important information for you. We have it on very good authority that your husband's story was for sale. For sale? I don't understand. He told Braddock he'd kill the story for a price. A million dollars. That's why he was killed. 
The public has a right to know, as you said. Yes, I did. And they will, regardless. Oh, yes, we've already issued a media release. I hope you weren't expecting an exclusive. Whatever you did, it worked. Caroline got a job back. Well, hey, what are Big Brothers for? Well, she told them to stick it anyway. Reckons they don't appreciate her talents. Oh, who are you? I'm Celia, Simon's sister. And you're Lorraine Sparks. Is um, Simon here? Uh, no, no, he's not. Right, well, um, can you give him that for me, please? Uh, there's no point, Lorraine. He doesn't want to see you anymore. Just give that to him, please. That was easy. Well, I'm a little disappointed. What happened to the tears and hysteria that you promised? She can't do that. What? She's dumping me. Down. Senior Sergeant Wolf. Ah. Stanley. Hmm. Did you happen to catch Miss Miles' program last night? Not a mention of the case. Pulled her head right in. Mm. Game, set and match. <laughs> Thank you, ball boys. What's this? Envelope day for the Cosgroves from Braddock. His lawyers asked it to be passed on. Evidently, he is deeply remorseful for what happened to their daughter. Really? Well, I suppose we're obliged to pass it on then, aren't we? Does this Braddock character think this makes up for the death of our daughter? And some brownie points with the judge, I think. That's the idea. Money won't bring her back. Thank you for coming today. Come on, love. We've got a funeral to go to. 